In this programme three of their stories on their chest, a series of five special podcasts for ABF, the Soldiers' Charity, I'm joined once again by Mark Smith from the Antiques Roadshow. We've taken you from the first Afghan war, now up into the Victoria's Little Wars and the second Afghan war of the late 19th century. Mark, this is a great array of medals we have here. What exactly are we looking at? So first of all, we've, we've come a long way uh, from 1798 up to uh, here. We're going to start in 1857 with the Indian Mutiny. But whilst we've seen a lot of medals, I just want to make the point that this isn't all of the medals that were ever issued. We, we are just so, looking at a selection, a selection thereof. Yeah. Yeah. So as we said, we're going to start at the other end, or that red and white stripey thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is for the Indian Mutiny, 1857 to 58. And again, it's, it's about dominating part of the empire. And what we'll see throughout pretty much all of this row of medals that we have here is that it's about defending or expanding the empire. And that was what was going to happen in the 1800s. There's many different uh, medals here with, with different countries that you might not even thought about that we were fighting in. So the second medal is for China. So this will be the opium wars. So actually what we're trying to do is to get more opium than as we would now try and stop it. But in those days, it was about the supply of opium. For medicinal purposes? Possibly. We, we won't go there, but possibly. The next one, one is a, yeah, that one on the blue rear ribbon, is, is a medal that people don't really ever understand that we were there. And this is called uh, the medal for the powder wars. So this is the medal for New Zealand. So this is when we are fighting the Maori for the conquest of New Zealand itself. Really? I and, that was the case. and we fought there for years, trying to suppress the tribes. They'd sold us land, um, and then they sort of said, well, you know, we only sold it to you for a while. And we said, no, actually, it's ours. Um, and then there's this, there's this huge territorial war. So this next one is for fighting Abyssinia, 1869. 73. But this is this is the most expensive British medal that we ever managed to make. Mm -hmm. Because instead of putting the names man around the rim yes. or engraving it yep. in some way, what we actually did is we had to make a, an individual plaque with raised lettering for every single man who Goodness won the medal. Yeah. So yeah. we never did that again <laughs> because that was far too expensive. <laughs> and it's such a silly idea, I suppose. But we didn't do that one again. The next one, again, an odd medal for this is this is for Canada. This is, this is for the Fenian raids, um, when uh, insurgents were coming from North America into Canada and we had to stop them. Back to Africa now, because Africa is always a big part of the empire, and this one is the Ashanti medal. So this is where fighting on the west coast in the land of Ashanti. Yes, yeah. um, and that's for gold? It was about trade mm. um, and the fact that as we expanded into the country, the tribes that were there d didn't, didn't want us there. And it was about expanding our empire into some really horrible jungle in some cases. Yes. And, and for most of these sort of medals like this, the, the biggest problem for the soldiers and sailors is disease. It's not coming up against the enemy. Right. It's, it's the environment that you yeah. live in. Mm. Mm. And I imagine fighting in a red tunic is not the easiest thing to do anyway. Yes, and we still are fighting in red tunics up to yeah, this point. Yeah. Um, we finish in a red tunic on the end of the table, but um, up to this point, we're still in red tunics and um, blue cloth and white cloth overseas tropical helmets. And uh, yeah, this is not the, hard, this is hard, hard, hard yeah. stuff. Mm. And absolutely, the one that everyone will know is the next one, because that is the 1877-79 Zulu War Medal. And of course... We don't mean to be reminded that our backdrop is actually the defence of Rorkshire in 1879 yep. by the South Wales borderers where 13 Victoria Crosses were awarded in one day. Yes, and that's the campaign medal that they would have got. Um, it's, um, it's a much sought after medal, mostly because of the film, yep. obviously, that we've all seen. Um, it, before that film came out, I, I pretty much no one had ever heard of the Rorkshire mission mm. station. But once that film came out, then everybody wanted one of those medals. And there's only 124 odd of them who were there, so it's a rare thing. But also about that particular campaign, 
was that the Zulu was a particularly um, uh, uh, capable uh, and, and um, competent soldier. And, and he, of course, um, the, the Zulus cut down Lord Chancellor's column beforehand at this and Luana. Yes. And then, of course, all that was left was the mission station yeah. at Rourke's Rift. Yeah. So that really is a very special medal in terms of British history. And what we, of course, are reminded also about this at the same time is that um, the British Army didn't always get it right. And that perhaps typifies this particular period of history. And we'll come on to the very little little controversy at the very end of it when we finish up with the Boer War. Well, the next one is our uh, second sojourn to Afghanistan. Um, and we have two medals here. We have the, the British Afghanistan Campaign Medal, which is given out to the British soldiers. And this one has the uh, class Charissa, which is one of the battles. But this one is... Um, a, a native uh, medal given out by the by the Indians uh, to all, all soldiers but this one is and again it's names that we know this is the Kabul to Kandahar star mm. so this was given to those chaps who marched between the two places Jeez. you know to relieve each one mm. and then we move back to Africa uh, and here we see the Egypt medal uh, so this covers a large period in time mm. uh, in the 1870s and 80s um, and we fought up and down the Nile for control of of the country, uh, and interestingly, if you're if you're watching um, Dad's Army ever, this is the first medal that Corporal Jones is wearing on that <laughs> on that set of ribbons. Nice. Uh, and as we said earlier, we there are medals that are given to us by other countries that always go with a campaign medal. We said that earlier on, and this is the Khedive Star, and this one always comes with the Egypt medal. And again, if you look at Corporal Jones, the last one he's wearing is the dark blue, right at the very end. Very yeah. This one, uh, 1896, this is, um, uh, this is the Sudan medal. Uh, there is a British Sudan medal, but this is the, uh, this is the, the Egyptian version. And this one has the, the clasp Khartoum. Now, this one actually was won by a man called uh, Squadron Sergeant Major George Vasey who was wounded in the charge at Omdurman mm -hmm. when he charged with Winston Churchill. Yep. And there's a wonderful cartoon of him in the Illustrated London News. Uh, the officer that he's with, they're both mounted still, and the officer says, um, uh, well done, chaps. And squadron, it says in the caption, Squadron Sergeant Major Vasey, wounded by three, uh, three spear wounds to the chest, okay. says, go again, sir. Isn't that, that one? That, that, that was also the same time, of course, when, when, uh, when General Corden was cut down. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is something to do with that. This is called the uh, Gordon of Khartoum Star. So this is modelled on uh, a Turkish medal called the Order of the Medeji. And Gordon had one of those. And what he did is he took the medal off and he made a sand cast and they melted down rifle bullets and they made these and then they sold them to the soldiers who were in the encampment to raise money whilst they were under siege. Goodness. So that is a Gordon of Khartoum star. That is very rare indeed. They are very rare, yeah. yes. And that's very fragile because uh, they fracture just at this little bit here and they're, 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 they're quite hard to even carry around. But, that, but was that allowed to be worn officially on this unit? Because it was... Um, uh, something done within the siege, they would have, if you if you had one, you would have worn it during the siege. Mm -hmm. Once it was over, if you'd survived, and, and not many did, then yes, you would have brought that home and you would have worn it as, as proudly as you could to show that you were actually in the siege. Yes. It goes back to that thing in 1642 when we looked at the original coins uh, worn after Edge Hill, and it was like, that, this is a token saying, I was there. Yeah. 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 Very much and now we've come all the way through the, the the Victorian period really we've we've gone from uh, fighting in red uniforms as you say as we come to the very end of the red uniform period in the late 1890s mm -hmm. as we move over to the brown uniform uh, in Indian khaki yep. dusty yes so we suddenly this is the moment where we're changing away from that idea of red which is good because in the next 14 odd years we're going to be fighting the First World War and that's not a war like any of these men fought. What these guys did was was horrible. Uh, you know, it, it's warfare, so it's it's not. A, but what those guys did in the First World War is is worlds away from what these chaps experienced. And of course, that brings us on to the last two on the table, which are the medals for 
what we would call the Boer War, uh, 1899 to 1902. But uh, we have to have two medals for this because after such a long time on the throne, Queen Victoria has now passed on. And pretty much all of our medals have had her face on them, from a very young girl up to what we, what we call the, the, the last head uh, of, of Queen Victoria. She's, she's now an old lady. Uh, and then we have our first medal for a new monarch. We now have a medal for Edward VII. Um, not always awarded as a pair, but, but sometimes, most, mostly awarded as a pair, with, with many, many campaign clasps. Uh, there, there's a list, I think, of 28 or 29 for the Queen South Africa medal. Always two on the King South Africa, South Africa 01 and South Africa 02. So that's more sort of a time-related award, whereas this one is more about the battles or campaigns that you're actually in. But that brings us right up to the moment when the Victorian age is ended and the 20th century is just about to begin. Of course, this is a key moment in time because what we forget is that the British don't always cover themselves in glory. Of course, it was not the Germans, but the British, who invented the concept of the concentration camp. A concentration camp started in the Boer War. Mark, thank you once again for a fascinating uh, digest of the medals of the late 19th century, bringing us up to the Boer War. In the next episode, with their stories on their chest, the special series of podcasts for ABF, the Soldiers Charity, we move to the 20th century and the total war that dominates that period in time. Thank you once again, and thank you, Mark, for being with us yet again.